Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 386, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 386. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in Christ, as we await the great festival of Christmas, let us prepare ourselves so that we may be shown its true meaning. Let us hear in lessons from Holy Scripture how the prophets of Israel foretold that God would visit and redeem his waiting people. Let us rejoice in our carols and hymns that the good purpose of God is being mightily fulfilled. Let us celebrate the promise that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will bring all people and all things into the glory of God's eternal kingdom. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. But first, let us pray for the world which God so loves, for those who have not heard the good news of God, or who do not believe it, for those who walk in darkness and the shadow of death, and for the church in this place and everywhere, that it may be freed from all evil and fear and may in pure joy lift up the light of the love of God. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer to God 
in the words which Christ himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. I invite you to be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. When the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, there was no field shrub on earth and no grass of the field that had sprouted. For the Lord God had sent no rain upon the earth and there was no man to till the ground. But a stream was welling up out of the earth and watering all the surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed the man out of the dust of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made grow every tree that was delightful to look at and good for food, with the tree of life in the middle of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God then took the man and settled him in the Garden of Eden to cultivate and care for it. The Lord God gave the man this order, you are free to eat from any of the trees of the garden, except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. From that tree you shall not eat. When you 
eat from it, you shall die. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suited for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each living creature was then its name. The man gave names to all the tame animals, all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals, but none proved to be a helper suited to the man. So the Lord God cast the deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built the rib that he had taken from the man into a woman. When he brought her to the man, the man said, this one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one body.
A reading from the book of Genesis. Now the snake was the most cunning of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He asked the woman, did God really say you shall not eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the snake, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, you shall not eat it or even touch it or else you will die. But the snake said to the woman, you certainly will not die. God knows well that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods who know good and evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eyes, and the tree was desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. When they heard the sound of the Lord God walking about in the garden at the breezy time of the day, the man and his wife hid themselves from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The Lord God then called to the man and asked him, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Then God asked, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat? The man replied, the woman whom you put here with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, what is this you have done? The woman answered, the snake tricked me, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the snake, because you have done this, cursed are you among all the animals, tame or wild. On your belly you shall crawl, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. They will strike at your head while you strike at their heel.
A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service has ended, that her guilt is expiated, that she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice proclaims, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill made low. The rugged land shall be a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Proclaim. I answer, What shall I proclaim? All flesh is grass, and all their loyalty like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower wilts. When the people of the Lord blows, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it, yes, the people is grass. The grass withers, the flower wilts, but the word of our God stands forever. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of good news. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Cry out, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom, leading the ewes with care. Please join in singing hymn number 402, Comfort, Comfort, O My People, number 402.
A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. See, days are coming, oracle of the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors the day I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. They broke my covenant, though I was their master, oracle of the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after these days, oracle of the Lord. I will place my law within them, and I will write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. They will no longer teach their friends and relatives, know the Lord. Everyone from least to greatest shall know me, oracle of the Lord, for I will forgive their inequity and no longer remember their sin. A reading from the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, 
Do not fear, Zion. Do not be discouraged. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a mighty Savior who will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love, who will sing joyfully because of you as on festival days. I will remove disaster from among you so that no one may recount your disgrace. At that time, I will deal with all who oppress you. I will save the lame and assemble the outcasts. I will give them praise and renown in every land where they were shamed. At that time, I will bring you home, and at that time, I will gather you. For I will give you renown and praise among all the peoples of the earth. When I bring about your restoration before your very eyes, says the Lord. A reading from the prophet Baruch. Look to the east, Jerusalem. See the joy that comes to you from God. Here come your children, whom you sent away, gathered in from east and west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of God. Jerusalem, take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on forever the splendor of glory from God. Wrapped in the mantle of justice from God, place on your head the diadem of the glory of the Eternal One. For God will show your splendor to all under the heavens. You will be named by God forever, the peace of justice, the glory of God's worship. Rise up, Jerusalem, stand upon the heights, look to the east and see your children gathered from east to west at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Led away on foot by their enemies, they left you, but God will bring them back to you, carried high in glory as on royal thrones. 
For God has commanded that every lofty mountain and the age-old hills be made low, that the valleys be filled to make a level ground, that Israel may advance securely in the glory of the God. The forests and every kind of fragrant tree have overshadowed Israel at God's command, for God is leading Israel in joy by the light of his glory with the mercy and justice that are his. Please join in singing hymn number 398, People Look East, number 398. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. But a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be the fear of the Lord, Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide. But he shall judge the poor with justice, and decide fairly for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion shall browse together with a little child to guide them. 
The cow and the bear shall graze together, their young shall lie down. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play by the viper's den, and the child shall lay his hand on the adder's lair. They shall not harm or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, as waters cover the sea. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. 
In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the priestly division of Abijah. His wife was from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both were righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Once, when he was serving as priest in his division's turn before God, according to the practice of the priestly service, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to burn incense. Then, when the whole assembly of the people was praying outside at the hour of the incense offering, the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was troubled by what he saw, and fear came upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you shall name him John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers toward children and the disobedient to the understanding of the righteous, to prepare a people fit for the Lord. Then Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel said to him in reply, I am Gabriel, who stand before God. I was sent to speak to you and to announce to you this good news. But now you will be speechless and unable to talk until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled at their proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and were amazed that he stayed so long in the sanctuary. But when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He was gesturing to them, but remained mute. Then, when his days of ministry were completed, he went home. After this time, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she went into seclusion for five months, saying, So has the Lord done for me at a time when he has seen fit to take away my disgrace before others.
Gospel of Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord, May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. During those days, Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked upon his handmaid's lowliness. Behold, From now on will all ages call me blessed. The Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age to those who fear him. He has shown might with his arm, dispersed the arrogant of mind and heart. He has thrown down the rulers from their thrones, but lifted up the lowly. The hungry he has filled with good things. The rich he has sent away empty. He has helped Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy according to his promise to our fathers, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then return to her home.
Let us stand together. Judah and Jerusalem, fear not nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go forth, and the Lord will be with you. Stand still, and you shall see the salvation of the Lord. Tomorrow go forth, and the Lord be with you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Need not fear. The prayer has many variations, but God hears them all and answers them in his mercy and his love. This is the evening of the day the Lord has made for us to be glad and to rejoice in. Thank you for gathering, and let us show our glad thanksgiving to the music ministry that has led us to this evening of praise, of reflection, of prayer, and thanksgiving. Thank you so very much. And let us pray. O oh God, who make us glad with yearly expectation of your coming, grant that we who with joy receive your only begotten Son as our Redeemer may without fear behold him, and when he shall come to be our judge, even your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end, Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go now and always in the peace of Christ. Please join in singing hymn number 394, Come, O Long-Expected Jesus, number 394.